Recently, we had the opportunity to interview Professor George Church of Harvard University, in which he talked about aging and gene therapy for age-related diseases. Before releasing the interview series, we would like to talk about a couple of relevant papers that he, he talks about in the interview. Today, we will go through the first of these. Here is the paper. A single combination gene therapy treats multiple age-related diseases. The paper is from 2019 and looks at mice. Since then, Dr. Davidson, who led the trial, Professor Church and others have founded a company, Rejuvenate Bio, to move the therapy forward, starting with a trial in dogs. If Rejuvenate Biotherapy is found to be safe and effective in dogs, it could open the door to similar therapies for age-related diseases and ageing in humans. Traditionally, diseases are researched and treated individually, but this does not address the interconnectedness and ends up with multiple treatments and increased risk. In this study, they overcame this deadlock by using gene therapies, delivered with adeno-associated viruses to simultaneously treat several age-related diseases. They created four gene therapies and tried them alone and in combination against four age-related diseases. And they found one treatment with two of the therapies was effective against all four diseases. A quick note on adeno-associated viral vectors or AAVs. An adeno-associated virus is a common virus that is used to deliver DNA and RNA payloads to cells. The DNA of the virus is edited to contain the required DNA then allowed to infect the cells and deliver the DNA material. The virus does not cause disease in humans. You may recall that Dr. Sinclair used a similar method to express the Yamanaka factors in his recent study on regrowing a mouse optic nerve. Let's have a look in a little more detail at the study and the results. The authors created three gene therapies based on fibroblast growth factor 21, FGF21, which I will call F, alpha clotho, and soluble form of mouse transforming factor beta receptor 2, which I will call T. I am not going to dive into detail with what these do. They targeted these three therapies to mitigate the four age-related diseases obesity, type 2 diabetes, heart failure and renal or kidney failure. And they applied the therapies individually and in combination to find the most effective. Let's have a look at a summary of some of the key results, first looking at obesity. As mentioned, they gave the mice different combinations of the therapies. Here, ND is normal diet and HFD is high fat diet, which normally makes the mice obese. And here we can see the weight of the mice over time. This line is the mice on a normal diet, which show a slow weight gain associated with age. And here are the controls on the high fat diet, who are already more obese from the diet before the trial started. And here is the effect of the successful gene therapy bringing the mice weight down to below that of the control even though they stayed on the HFD. And here we can see the difference in the mice and that the effect lasted over time although the treatment was only delivered once. The next disease was diabetes where they looked at the results of glucose and insulin tolerance tests. The left hand graphs show glucose and insulin over time split out by the treatment. Perhaps more relevant is the area under the curve, or how long and how much glucose stayed in the blood. The graphs clearly sh show that in various combinations the F treatment is most effective. The next test is for kidney failure. The authors induced kidney failure in the mice, which normally leads the kidney to atrophy. We can see this in images along the top in A, then graphically below in B. Here we can see that the combination of T and F produced the best result, with injury having only a small effect, less than 10%. And the final test was heart failure, where again they induced an injury in the mouse heart. The graphs show metrics for the health of the heart in terms of how much blood they pump. Here we see the control where the results deteriorate over time. And here we see the results again for the combination of T and F, where the results are more variable but in general are better. In summary, the tests show that the combination of T or STGF beta R2 and F or FGF21 could successfully treat all four of these age-related diseases. And the combination of the two had the overall most beneficial effect. It's important to note that the approach is an attempt to increase the overall well-being of the individual and to mitigate multiple diseases at once. 
the strategy also aligns with the approval process of the FDA by showing improvement in specific illnesses rather than trying to show longevity. The AAV gene delivery has a low risk profile which avoids some of the risks of negative side effects associated with small molecules. It depends on the mechanism but it can be set up so it only needs to be delivered once rather than over time. As we saw in the obesity test where the mouse weight remained low after single administration. I hope that you found the video informative. I think this is really exciting in that it seems to show promise in a specific measurable way but also to have a wider beneficial effect on the body. Professor Church talks more about these tests and the next steps in our interview so please stay tuned. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and will speak to you all soon.